Hello, welcome to Easy Chinese. I'm Emma. We knew Yi, Yue, and Xin has the meaning of the sun, the moon, and the star. When Yue combines with another Zi, Liang, make a Zi Yue Liang, that means the moon. When Xin combines with self, make a Zi Xin Xin, that means the star. But Yi didn't show up in the Zi Tai Yang, which means the sun. So, is there any place in modern Chinese where Yi can represent the sun? The answer is yes. In some Zi, Yi means the sun. Here, I'm going to show you an example. This Zi, Yi Chu, means sunrise. It's a noun. Usually used to show the view of the sunrise. This Zi, Chu, CH reads Chi, Chi, U reads Wu, Wu. So Chi, Wu, Chu, Chu. This picture looks like a foot steps out of a cave. That's where its jargon form comes from. It means from inside to outside, come out, exit, or go. So from inside to outside is true. Then how about from outside to inside? Look at this jagu one. It has a similar shape of this bronze arrow. They actually represented arrows or sharp weapons penetrate into the body. So it has the meaning of the from outside to inside, or enter, join, income. In its pinyin, R reads Yi, U reads Wu. So Yi, Wu, Ru, Ru. It's the fourth tongue, so it's Ru, Ru. Now let's compare this Zi with Ren. Those two Zi look very similar to each other. But for Ru, the left part is shorter than right part. For Ren, it is opposite. When we write in Ru, to make it more clearly, we bend down the top of the right part. So make it less like Ren. Now look at those signs. In this sign, Anquan means safety. This one, Jinji, means emergency. And this sign, you can usually see it on the highway. That means exit of the highway. Those three signs all have this Zi, Chu Kou. Chu, we already learned, is from inside to outside. This Kou Zi has the meaning of the mouth, jaw. Orifice. The letter K reads K, K. O U reads O, O. So K O, K O, K O. It's a third tongue, so it's K O, K O. Its jagu wen form looks like a laughing mouth. In the modern form. The upper parts were removed. It's more like a square. So Chu and Kou put together is Chu Kou. It means exit. Its antonym is Ru Kou. So put Ru and Kou together make a Zi Ru Kou. It means entrance. So Chu Kou exit. Ru Kou, entrance. If we put Ren and Kou together, make a Zi Ren Kou, that means population. Chu Kou has another meaning, that means export. So you may wondering if Ru Kou means import. Actually, the answer is no. For import, we use another Zi Jing Kou. So when Chu Kou as exit, 
Its antony is rural coal. When true coal is export, its antonym is Jing coal. Let's look at Jing's pinyin. J reads J. I N reads Yin. So J Yin Jing. It's the fourth tongue, so it's Jing. In the Jia Gu Wen, this part is a bird. The lower part is a fish. Together, they mean moving forward. And the extended meaning of the enter at once come into. This is how this Zi evolved. Today, you can still see this form in some place. Here, I will explain a little bit about traditional Chinese and the simplified Chinese. This is a traditional Chinese character. It's a character set has around 2,000 years history. People still use it before China's liberation in 1949. In the 1950s, the government of People's Republic of China found out most people in China couldn't read and write, so they introduced a new character set to popularize Chinese language. This new set of the character is the simplified Chinese characters. It is used in mainland China, Singapore, Malaysia, and the traditional Chinese characters are still used in Taiwan, Hong Kong, Macau. Simplified Chinese characters usually look simpler than the traditional Chinese characters. That's where its name came from. In these lectures. Unless I say it specifically, all the Zi we learn are simplified Chinese characters. Jin means moving forward. Ru means from outside to inside. This Zi Jin Ru means moving from the outside to inside. That is enter, get into. Here Jin means enter, Lai means come. So together. That means coming, getting. This Zi Lai, Air reads Le, Ai reads I, Le Ai, Lai, Lai. It's the second time, so it's Lai, Lai. Lai's original meaning means wait. Look at its Jiago Wen form. It looks like a wage, but today it already knows the meaning of the wage. It means come, arrive, future, or incoming. True means from inside to outside. So when true combined with lie, the Zi true lie means come out. Now imagine you and your friends go to the beach. To say Ri Chu, remember Ri Chu means sunrise. So you wait and wait. Finally, the Taiyang rises from the horizon. Then you start yelling, Taiyang 出来了 Taiyang is the sun. Chu Lai means come out. This Zi Le doesn't have an actual meaning. It used as a model particle. Put at the end of sentence. I will explain it soon. This is a period. You can see the differences between Chinese and English. English period is a dot. Chinese period is a small circle. There's the other case. You can see Taiyang 出来了 Suppose it's raining or cloudy. After a while, the rain stopped. Or the cloud disappears, it turns to sunny. Then you can say 太阳出来了 or you can say 天晴了天晴了 Remember, 词晴天 means sunny day. Now use 晴 as a verb. That means become sunny. Both sentences contain same 字了 This 字了 Is very important in Chinese language. You can see it appear in many situations. 
and have different meanings. It even have two different pronunciations. But today, I will just show you one pronunciation and two common usages under this pronunciation. Here, air reads l, l, e reads a, a. So l, a, l, l. And you may notice it doesn't have any tongues. Remember the ci, xing xing. The second xing doesn't have any tongue either. But xing zi alone has tongue. Just in the ci, xing xing, the second xing, we don't pronounce any tongue. But here, le zi doesn't have any tongues by itself. Those are two common usages when this zi pronounced as le. First, it's as a model particle express the change of the situation located at the end of the sentence or where it pause. The second one used as a perfective. In our last lecture, I said all Chinese words only have one grammatical form. So if we want to show the action has already done, we add this zi, le, right behind the verb, show this action has finished, has already done. But sometimes it's hard to tell the differences between those two usages. For example, in this case, 太阳出来了。le located right at the end of the sentence. It shows the change of the situation. 太阳 was below the horizon or hiding right behind the clouds. But now it rises or appears. But it can also treat it as a perfective too shows true like this action already done. In this case, for the meaning wise, it doesn't have much differences. But sometimes they are different. It may cause confusion in communication. In wikipedia.com, when you search Chinese grammar, it shows an example for those two usages. A man is on a long distance phone with his mother. He's trying to persuade his mom to come join some ceremony. After he hung up, he told other people in the room, Mama lai le. Here, Mama means mom. The second mark doesn't have any tongue. Just same as the word, xing xing. Lai, we already learned, means come. And the le here is at the end of the sentence, means change of the situation. Because Mama hasn't come yet. After a while, this man hears somebody at the door. He opened the door, then tells other people in the room, Mama lai le. Here, this le used as perfective. It located right behind the verb lai, shows this action already done. So it used same sentences to show different situations where le has different usages. But in my opinion, this example is not quite accurate. In real life, for the first case, I will say Mama Yao Lai Le instead of Mama Lai Le. I put another zi between Mama and Lai Le. This zi Yao means will, it's going to. So when I say Mama Yao Lai Le, that means mom is going to come. So apparently, the is not perfective here. It shows situation changed. But anyway, you can still see differences of those two usages in this example. Before we finish the lecture today, let's learn this new zi, ma. M reads m. A reads a. So, m a. Ma, ma. It's the first time, so it's ma. This zi's original meaning means mom. But in the most time of Chinese history, this zi was not used as mom. Before 20th century, it combines with the family name, means middle aged maid servant. Another zi, niang, used as mom. After Western culture came into China between 19th century to 20th century,
people started to use this zi, ma, to replace niang and mom. Some people think it's a direct translation from English words mom, but some people think we were just went back to mom's original meaning, mom. I'm not sure which side is correct. But anyway, today we use mom to represent the meaning of the mom. You can only see niang as the meaning of the mom in some classical literatures. Ma combined with other zi is a form of address for a married woman one generation one senior. I will talk about it later. The left part of the ma and the niang are same. This part comes from another zi, nu. N reads n. The right one is the letter u. So n u nu nu. It's certain, so it's nu. Its jiagu wen form looks like a woman sit on her heels. This zi has the meaning of the woman or daughter. Now let's look at the right part of the ma. This is a zi too. It reads ma. It indicates the pronunciation of the ma. Ma means horse. You can see its jiagu wen form looks like a rearing horse. Ma has a similar pronunciation of the ma. The difference is its tongue. It uses third tongue, so it reads ma. That's it for today's lecture. I will see you next time. 下次再见。